Today we're going to be responding to Fair Mormon's video about Joseph Smith's polygamy. And as you can imagine, it's an absolute doozy. I want to emphasize right now in the beginning that um, <clears throat> we don't necessarily consider Fair Mormon to be liars or devious deceivers or anything like that. They are just as much victimized by the untruths of the LDS church as anybody. And just because their personal blinders have been established to protect that which they hold most dear doesn't make them bad people. It seems like apologetics are kind of part of a deconversion process, whether or not everyone ends up at the same point. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, doesn't that seem like a step along the road? Totally. Because you're abandoning these more orthodox ideas about your religion. It's like how most of what we know about geology today started out as an attempt to prove that Noah's flood happened <laughs> and just totally bit them cool. in the butt. <laughs> I hate when that happens. <laughs> and uh, I think what will become obvious as we respond to this video is just how far people will go to defend their previously held beliefs yeah. to the point of like justifying the most terrible things, like in this case, uh, predatory sexual assault mm -hmm. on minors mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, it's really grim, and that's the problem with the, uh, all high-demand religions and cults, is that um, defending the organization, defending the prophet, is the most important thing, and whatever's done in service of that becomes justifiable. The ends always justify the means, but that can take you down some really dark roads, as it did with Mormonism, as it does with pretty much every cult. Watch a documentary. <laughs> yeah, one of the reasons we talk out about Mormonism and high demand religions and cults and stuff generally is because um, in in those systems, in those groups, um, the group kind of seizes control of your identity and, and you become, your identity becomes that of the group. So that's like a, the main characteristic of groups like that. Um, and so the issue with that is that then um, you don't have enough of a sense of identity outside of the group to leave it easily, which means when you're confronted with evidence that the things you believe are not true, um, your sense of self is too fragile for you to be able to, you know, just accept it. Like if I hear some random fact about how, you know, Hindu scripture is bullshit for some reason, I'm just like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Doesn't have it. I don't have an emotional reaction to that, obviously. Um, but it, it's so emotional. I'm just... Yeah, I guess we're, I'm wanting to get across that we get it, not that I think the people involved will necessarily mm. um, care. But for the for those of you who maybe found our video because you are LDS and questioning and, you know, the algorithm put us in front of you, um, <laughs> we, we get how hard it is to be confronted with information that challenges your beliefs. Um, and we understand the fear. And I, when human beings are afraid, like, sadly, that's also when we're capable of being our most sort of shitty in all kinds of ways, including being potentially intellectually dishonest, because we're just trying to protect ourselves. Like, it's all security. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, all of this is, like, so primal in a way. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's our long-ass disclaimer. Yeah. Let's talk about the fact that this video is called Mo Wives, Mo Problems. Welcome back to This Is The Show. This one's going to be controversial, so let's jump in. The CES letter states that Joseph Smith was married to 34 women. However, it doesn't make a distinction between marriage and ceilings. You know who else said that Joseph Smith had 34 wives? The front page of the New York Times! <laughs> if the picture in your head is Joseph Smith fooling around with a bunch of women, you're wrong. That's not Joseph Smith, it's Jason Derulo. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It's a pretty <laughs> decent jo Jason Derulo joke. Like, I'm not, you are a master of comedy in a way that I'm not, but um, good, good for them <laughs> for, for jazzing these up. I, I see what they're going for and I, I get, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm just I'm appreciating the production as much as, I, you know, they're wrong. <laughs> and you're a better person than I am because I wouldn't <laughs> say so. Also, Joseph Smith... Well, I'm like, where else could they take that joke? Like, this is, this is all just... Uh, with, with what they're working with. <laughs> I think, good job, Jason, or whoever you are. <laughs> um, Justin Smith was messing around with a lot of women. Yeah. Like, he was. So, like, don't try to paint it like he wasn't doing that. <laughs> According to church doctrine, sealing is when two people are spiritually partnered together for the next life. Church doctrine is not a source. Like, according to church doctrine, you're just making up whatever you want. <laughs> Most marriages are sealed for time, meaning this life, and eternity, meaning the next life. 
But not all of Joseph's ceilings were for time and eternity. Many were just for eternity. There are no official doctrinal sources distinguishing between eternal marriage and this other mm. eternity-only ceiling. That's a total fabrication that came after Joseph Smith. That's like putting words in his mouth. Sealing is usually synonymous with marriage, but that shouldn't always be so. For example, children are sealed to their parents. The sealing power is about binding humanity oh, they together. Are, for they are really using Joseph. They are trying to paint a picture where Joseph Smith marrying underage girls was binding humanity together. That's some. I, you can't do a better job than that. Like you can't. <laughs> Polish a turd anymore. This, this is the max you can do. Beautiful, glorious turd. When this is your goal and the doctrine is being restored, it isn't unreasonable that polygamy would come into effect. All of this is also funny because, like, Mormonism is so convoluted and, like, very, like, family trees, and I'm just like, mm. Um, like, to, the, to someone who wasn't raised in this, they'd just be like, okay, that all sounds <laughs> very conveniently complicated, but if you're raised in it, you're kind of, you you see the world through this, like, very um, specific lens. The whole sealing thing is, it's so many like unnecessary steps. Like, why do you gotta be sealed to everyone to be into heaven together? You're not all gonna live in the same house together. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're, it's gonna be, if you took all the people who are living, all the Mormons who are on earth today, assuming that they're worthy, gonna go to the celestial kingdom and then put, into he put them into heaven, like, what has the ceiling done to change the actual logistical arrangements of their relationships? I know. Nothing. <laughs> and every cult thinks that their leader who's marrying teenage girls is doing it because of the divine. That's what we should point out. Everyone. Like, watch everyone. literally any, any cult documentary. Any cult documentary. <laughs> they all take young girls as wives. They all have a specific narrative about why it's okay. This is Mormonism's one. It's like, oh no, there was no sex involved, even though there's no reason to think that that's true. Now, the CES letter also claims that while Apostle Orson Hyde was on a mission, Joseph Smith married his wife, Mirinda. However, John D. Lee records that Orson gave permission. When he returned from his mission, Orson- He gave permission to the cult leader to marry his wife, so it's not weird. <laughs> also, interesting, John D. Lee is the guy who carried out the Mountain Meadows Massacre. Oh. And <laughs> Reliable fella. And uh, I love Fair Mormon's take on this on their actual website. You can go to their website right now and they have uh, critics claim that Joseph Smith sent men on missions and then married their wives. And then their argument oh, yeah. is literally, that's not that true. Times. That only happened twice. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't seem that he was upset by Joseph and Mirinda's sealing. However, in 1846, Mirinda was then sealed to Orson Hyde for eternity. This. It's almost like it was some kind of sex cult in the 1800s. <laughs> Seriously, any cult doc. This complicated narrative suggests that the early view of sealing isn't completely understood yet. The CES letter's flippant attempt to pawn it off as purely sexual is misleading. There are too many variables to claim that this was practiced just for sex. If you want to have sex, you don't start a religion. You get an Airbnb in Seattle. Au contraire, mon frere. <laughs> Starting a religion is the number one way to have a lot of sex. Again, watch any cult any documentary. Cult documentary. <laughs> like, honestly. The number one way. <laughs> because then you have God backing you up, telling all these people that you have to sleep with him or else God's going to be mad, which is exactly what Joseph Smith did. Yeah, and I mean, it makes sense because the types of people who start Heidemann religions and cults are typically narcissists, like Joseph Smith. What, what do narcissists want? Well, they want power, and what's a thing that a lot of men in power want? Like, all the women they want. It's just, it's, it's these very human impulses just acted out in this, like, complicated, civilized world. But, you know, it's just these, again, primal instincts of, like, the narcissistic alpha wants all the women uh -huh. and all the power. Like, it's... <laughs> this the this ter this Airbnb in Seattle joke. I'm like you've spoken never by like a true person who's never had <laughs> you've sex. You've never had sex, and if you have, you've cried too much for it to count. But like, <laughs> well, he's trying to imply that um, why would someone go to all this work to have sex? And it's like you haven't studied any human history. Yeah, literally the history of cults and religions because. That's how it's Everyone. done. Everyone <laughs> <laughs> cannot overstate this. Jim Jones, Keith Ranieri. Uh, Bhagwan Sri Rajni. Scientology dude, Ron uh, Hubbard. Ron, L. Ron Hubbard. Um, Just go down the list. Uh, what's the Amy. Waco guy? <laughs> they all, they literally watch I mean, any, watch Islam, the whole right? document. Oh, yeah, Muhammad, same way. Yeah, underage um, too. It's so textbook. And you don't see it until you start researching the actual history of Mormonism and 
viewing these other patterns in other people. That's what did it for me. And being yeah. like, oh my goodness, this is the exact same thing. It's like they all use the cult leader handbook because they're all using the same plays. It's insane. So they're trying to convince the viewer that the that P Joseph Smith's polygamy wasn't inherently sexual. And yet this is like a like I said a total fabrication that's come many years after the facts because all the contemporary documentation including Joseph Smith's own words, his own revelations, which if you presume, you know, if you believe that these revelations were given by God in the Book of Mormon in the Doctrine and Covenants, then these are like actual indisputable commandments. Again, these scriptures are the only context that the Lord has ever given for polygamy. So the first mention of polygamy we get um, in Jacob 2, which is in the Book of Mormon. And uh, it says, Wherefore, my brethren, hear me and hearken to the word of the Lord. For there shall not any man among you have, save it be one wife, and concubines he shall have none. For if I will, saith the Lord of hosts, raise up seed unto me, I will command my people. Otherwise, they shall hearken to these things. So he's basically saying, you're only supposed to have one wife unless I'm going to raise up seed. And I remember hearing a seminary teacher be like, that could be spiritual seed, you know, by, jo by Joseph Smith or it whoever be being sealed to more than one person. It allows them to become the spiritual seed, which is such a bend, like a deliberate bending of meaning like seed. The seed is literally the reproductive part of a plant. Mm -hmm. The word inseminate comes from the Latin word seed there's like literally no other way to mean it. And when it's talking about posterity, mm. like you cannot have posterity Spiritual without reproduction, posterity. without sex. So it, uh, I have some more scripture because I really want to nail down the context here. Um, again, there's the, the whole chapter in Jacob right there. He's talking about sex. There's no other other discussion or like, oh, spiritual posterity. It's literally about sex. And so to claim it's not is to just to pull that out of thin and air. And why would God be ambiguous about sex? The sin next to murder. <laughs> yeah, right? You've got to get clear about that shit. So then uh, the next we hear about um, polygamy in a scriptural context is section 132. <laughs> and in this, the Lord gives strict commandments about the establishment of polygamy. So um, he says in verse 34, God commanded Abraham and Sarah, and Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham, his wife. And why did she do it? because this was the law, and from Hagar sprang many people. This, therefore, was fulfilling, among other things, the promises. So, again, spraying many people. It's talking about literal reprodu or reproduction here, which cannot occur without sex. And then continuing. Was Abraham therefore under condemnation? Verily I say unto you, Nay, for I, the Lord, commanded it. So, um, and then in 37, Abraham received concubines and they bore him children. And it was accounted unto him for righteousness because they were given unto him and he abode in my law. No reference to anything besides sexual relationships between man and wife. And again, these people that Joseph Smith propositioned for marriage understood themselves to be wives of Joseph Smith. And you can't twist that to mean something else unless you actually change the definition of the word wife, which is total which they, which Orwellian would double never speak. Do because they are big into keeping the same definition. <laughs> yeah, <very true>. right. <laughs> um, verse uh, 41. As ye have asked concerning adultery, adultery, verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man receiveth a wife in the new and everlasting covenant, and if she be with another man, and I have not appointed unto her by the holy anointing, she hath committed adultery, a sexual crime, and shall be destroyed. Nothing about the guys. Nothing really happens to them. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Um, and again, as pertaining to the law of the priesthood, if any man, man espouse a virgin, a term for a person who's never had sex and desire <laughs> to knows. espouse another, meaning get married to another person and the first give her consent. So his first wife says, yeah, you can take that virgin. And if he espouses the second and they are virgins and have vowed to no other man, then is he justified. He cannot commit adultery for they are given unto him for he cannot commit adultery with that that belongeth unto him and to no one else. You can't read this and be like, oh, he's talking about something besides sex, wife, 
means something else. Espouse means something else. <laughs> Fuck behind a dumpster means something else. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? It's so, so obvious. And this is the argument they have to make because there's no real justification for a, a religious leader like taking teenage girls as wives. Like, modern mo- members aren't really okay with that, you know? So they, they have to say, like, there was no sex in those ones. But... Again, you'd think that God would want to make that very clear. Like, just so you know, the kids he's marrying, there's not going to be sex. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't just, like, leave that ambiguous. Because, why? like, God's not trying to perpetuate child abuse. And, like, heaven forbid... I mean, people have got the idea that it's okay to coerce young girls into sex because of Joseph Smith and mm-hmm. because of Brigham Young. Totally. Because they believe so fervently. Totally. And... It grinds my gears because, like, this is one where it's... We are talking about child abuse yeah totally we are talking about the sexual abuse of children Mm -hmm. through religious coercion which is common among religious cult leaders and for you to just sit there and like make some dumb joke about sex about is oh god a seattle make some dumb joke about sex being something you only do in an airbnb in seattle or whatever it's just like irresponsible because it's like do you really think about it do you really think your guy is the one who is the exception do you really think that listen to what you're having to defend right now you're having to defend a middle aged man coercing teenage girls into marriage and And your only way you can do it is like oh no there was no sex and if the whole purpose of sealing is that um, you're just going to be joining Joseph Smith's big, happy, platonic family. That's something not, not something that you have to keep secret under penalty yeah, of death. Exactly. Then why <laughs> would you go to someone's sister and be like, Hey, um, let's get married, but you can't tell your sister. And then mm. also go to her sister and tell her the same thing. Which sisters were those? I forget. Anyway, there's a set of sisters that Joseph Smith married and told each of them to not tell each other. Or, why would you do that? Or threat. If it was some family thing, you'd be able to explain that to them. They'd both be down because they think you're the prophet. There's a reason you would tell them to hide it from each other. I there's a you reason to... you would burn a printing press down for exposing <laughs> you. There's a reason when someone says, do you have a bunch of wives? You would say, nope, I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is zero evidence that Joseph had a sexual or romantic relationship Relationship with Marinda. With Marinda? I don't know who Marinda is, so they could be right about that. There's no, we don't have any <laughs> photographic evidence of Joseph Smith and Marinda <laughs> getting it on. 32 or 33 <laughs> women, like Marinda <laughs> keeps it on the DO, okay. Besides the fact that they were married in a system that God established to raise up seed, it's in your scriptures. Montana, not in Besides Montana. that, no evidence. The letter also quoted church historian Marlon K. Jensen and Fair Mormon out of context. <laughs> Heaven forbid, but it must feel really bad to be quoted out of context. I don't know if Jeremy did that. We, we, like, we know and like Jeremy, Jeremy and he He's seems a like sweetheart. a very honest guy. The letter goes on to say this. The church and apologists now attempt to justify these polyandrous marriages by theorizing that they probably didn't include sexual relations That's and thus were eternal or dynastic ceilings only. How is not having sex with a living man's wife on earth only to take her away from him in the eternities to be one of your 40 wives any better or less immoral? Well, the ironic thing is the CES letter is atheistic and against the idea of God in general. If there's no God, then marriage is just a societal construct. Wow, that was a leap. We really went on a ride there. We did the silly voice for what felt like hours. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like he was reading a quote that was literally just describing everything he just, just said. said. <laughs> and he was like, well, it's, it's read by an atheist, you know, so like you can't trust it. I'm like, that's uh-huh. your argument, is it? Sexual ethics are based on subjective views and there's actually nothing immoral about polygamy at all. If people are consenting, that's all that matters. If there's no objective truth rooted in a higher power, then Jeremy Runnell's objection to polygamy is based solely on his own opinion and in an atheistic society in which subjective views are all that matter, it would be inappropriate of him to push his marriage opinions onto others. No, because there were underage girls involved and do you know about consent laws? We are talking, I mean, I am talking, anytime I'm talking about polygamy, I'm thinking of teenage girls being coerced. Like, also Mm. women as well, because, I mean women of any age can be coerced by a religious leader who their entire community worships as a prophet, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So there's coercion no no matter the age. But I'm like, lest we forget, there are 14, 15, 16 year old girls involved in this. Also, the fact, like just saying like, oh, they consented is so absurd. Kids can't consent. Kids, and also, children cannot consent. People can't consent. consent when they're being coerced by a religious leader who has an, and there's an enormous power imbalance there. Enormous. If, like, you're a devout Catholic your whole life and then the Pope comes to you and says, marry him, I mean, do, do, can you really say you have, like, full choice in that? And, and you've been, like... 
And it's not as simple as dating the Pope. Yeah. It's not just, it's not like Joseph Smith was like, hey, want to go on a date, grab a drink sometime, mild, <laughs> mild barley drink, sit down at the uh, in the Red House Inn or whatever. And it wasn't like that. It was like showing up and be like, hey, your whole family is going to be destroyed. You're going to be destroyed. I'm going to be destroyed unless we get married. I just watched the um, two different docuseries on the Nexium cult, mm -hmm. which you got to watch. Insane. This guy is like a modern day Joseph Smith. Um, and seeing how a, you know, really, really successful, intelligent, charismatic women could mm -hmm. be not just seduced, not just, uh, like convinced to have sex, but totally coerced mm -hmm. through a long process of brainwashing. Yeah. Like yeah. these women were branded his sex slaves. Like they had his initials branded above their vaginas and like they're all Kelly as well. Yes. Yeah, they're kind of. trafficking other women to be branded into his select sex slave thing. And at no point till much later were that, did they even see that as a bad thing? Because all the only thing that they knew was make Keith happy. Like Keith is the one who has made me so happy. Keith is the one who's shown me mm -hmm. how to do these things. Like if no, Keith, is Keith has ever made anyone happy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to all the Keiths out there. I'm sure you have. Yeah. But uh, just showing, like, it's not as cut and dry as, like, well, just two adults, or in Joseph Smith's case, an adult and a minor, consenting to have sexual relations. It's this whole huge, like you said, power imbalance that's being used in coercive, manipulative, and abusive mm -hmm. ways. Getting to be people to do things that they wouldn't do in any other circumstance. And it's really good in these situations... <sighs> God. So the cats are pissed about this. <laughs> they fucking hate pedophilia. <laughs> they raise them well. It's always good if you are in a religion like this and you find yourself making excuses like this for something like, you know, a middle-aged prophet coercing teenage girls into marriage. To ask yourself, would I be okay with my line of apologetics here if it was about another religion? Like, if I think about this happening, you know, in the Catholic church or any other church or group, but do church because that will feel the closest to you. Banksy is really on one. Um, you know, would you be okay with it? Would you be okay with some other Heidemann religious leader saying, oh, no, no, but I didn't have sex with the young ones or like you wouldn't, you yeah. wouldn't. You wouldn't, for God's sake. <laughs> Basically, if there is no God, any argument against polygamy is pointless and subjective. Again, he's trying to he's trying to make polygamy yeah. as a concept the issue, and that's not the issue. Yeah. Like, I'm polyamorous, it's fine. You can do that ethically. Yeah. Joseph Smith could have had lots of wives ethically, but he didn't. Like, yeah. it's how that was implemented. Who cares what Jeremy Reynolds thinks? As long as consent exists, polygamy is fine. As long as, as consent exists consent and it doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. That's the whole point. <laughs> That's our issue with polygamy. Again, like, you're talking to two people who are, like, would happily talk to you about polyamory for ages. <laughs> that, it's the difference between, like, sex work isn't inherently wrong. Right. Sex trafficking is, right. and that's what leaders like uh, cult leaders like Keith Rainier, uh, Rainier got in trouble for, mm -hmm. was because consent didn't exist in that situation. When Joseph Smith is, you know, propositioning a 14, 16 year old girl and threatening her with destruction or you know all this stuff, consent doesn't exist, and that's what the mm -hmm. problem is. It was thank no, you. There was no <laughs> concept of consent. In Joseph Smith's time, obviously, like we're no, only women just were property. starting to, yeah, we're only just starting to grasp it now. So, like, of course, no. Well, I mean, but there were people that were like, "Hey, this guy's marrying a lot of young girls." Like, there were people at the time saying that, you know. Mm. But <laughs> Oliver you, Cowdery called it a dirty, nasty, filthy scrape. Why also, would you say that about a sibling spiritual relationship? <laughs> a dirty, nasty. Let's point that head. out. Well, Joseph Smith's first wife, he took wife uh, who he was discovered banging in the barn. Um, that was before he even had the priesthood yeah, like restored. Yeah. This the the ceiling power wasn't even a concept. He married yet. that was who was that? That was um Fanny Alger. Fanny Alger before he'd even claimed to have the revelation yet. Yeah, it, so that what a convenient <laughs> response to being caught in a barn. I mean, it's like, come on, oh, this is an Occam's razor if I've ever. Yeah. 
the CES letter questions why Heber C. Kimball saw the proposition of his wife, Violet, marrying Joseph as an Abrahamic test if there was no sex involved. Well, Jim Bennett says it best. Because the test clearly involved a proposal that wasn't for that kind of ceiling, Heber C. Kimball calls this an Abrahamic test. That's significant, as it is compelling evidence that Joseph recognized genuine polyandry as being transgressive of the plural marriage revelation. Because the test clearly involved a proposal that wasn't for that kind of ceiling, saying it wasn't for a... It wasn't. He, he tested him saying, I want you to give me your wife. And he was like, oh shit. And then at the end of the day was like, okay, fine, oh. you, can ha you can have her. And then Joseph Smith was like, you passed the test. Which again is a very, very, very common cult yeah. leader tactic. Jim Jones, before giving everyone Kool-Aid, did practice runs where he was like, everyone drink this and everyone drank it. And then he's like, that was poisoned, you're about to die. And everyone's like, holy shit. And then he goes, just kidding, I was testing your loyalty. You passed or you failed or whatever. The CES letter states that out of the 34 women Joseph was sealed to, seven of them were teenagers as young as 14. This is misleading. Only one was 14, which can seem troubling at first glance, but with deeper investigation, not only troubling one. at all. Oh, good. Thank God. Oh, Thank God. Good. Just, it's just one. He's only raped one kid. Her name was Helen Mar Kimball. She was 14, and there is no record or indication of Joseph having sexual relations with her. In fact, Helen wrote, the step I am now taking is for eternity alone. Yeah, she's saying that that's the only way she can fucking survive it, just like Mormon <laughs> Keith in his miserable marriage. Like, you're like, this is gonna be good in the eternity. That's literally it. <laughs> it's like, like she, this sucks, but I'm doing it with the eternal that. perspective in mind. She wrote that in a thing where she's like, it's clearly an agony about the fact that she's trapped in this marriage with this older man. Her youth's been stolen from her. She writes as much. She literally says that, right? And they just pull out that quote. I'm like, where's <laughs> that shit on Quoting without victims? context much? Uh, this is an abuse victim. Mm -hmm. It was a ceiling for the next life. Helen actually spent the rest of her life defending the church and polygamy. Of course she did. Like, tons of people defend their abusers. Keith Ranieri's sex slaves are still gathering outside his prison cell. Uh, Warren Jeffs still Michael has followers. Michael Jackson's victims testified for him in court. Yeah. And then later were like, I was deeply fucked up. I hadn't got therapy. Like, I just was... Like, that's how it goes. That's how abuse works. Like, there's a complete lack of awareness about how the sexual coercion of children goes down in this video. Yeah, of course, uh, because there has to be. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, you are not making the points you think you are. She was also remarried two years later. So as much as anti-Mormons like to make this about pedophilia, the facts don't line up. It's yeah, we love making things about pedophilia. I love taking things to pedophilia when they don't need to be. Uh, God. In any other God. context, like I wish he could just hear himself. I would be so happy to never have pedophilia be a part of why I hate the Mormon church. You oh, know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I'm not looking to bring anything like that into it where it's not there. And I want, want to just emphasize that the another reason that this whole facade here is so worthless is that, you know, Joseph Smith aside, yeah, Joseph Smith, so bad. Like, the evidence is overwhelming. If you take into account all the context, all the patterns, it's as clear as day unless you have vested stake in denying it. But then, if you go to Brigham Young, mm -hmm. John Taylor, Lorenzo Wilfred Snow. Woodruff, Lorenzo Snow, they all married underage women and well documented and had kids, kids with, with them, them. like yeah. in their like 70s taking 12-year-old girls and having uh, children with them. So like why go on this whole thing about oh Joseph Smith didn't have sex with underage women, no prophet would do that when Except there are little other prophets one did and like, had a fucking kid with her. Yeah, it's all there like you have no case. It, after it's Joseph Smith secret. died, like, yeah, some of the secret, they just came out publicly about it, and then were just, like, actually openly coercing young women into marriage. Like, you have no argument. Like, you you sound so, so childish and, like, yeah. myopic. Like, you're looking at the world you, you through this tiny to, yeah. little pinhole. The other teenagers Joseph was sealed to shouldn't be viewed through the lens of what we call presentism. It was the 19th century. Sometimes people were married when they were teenagers. Okay, this is, I can't believe we're even having to say this, but if you look at census data from Joseph Smith's time, a very, very tiny number of people as young as 14 got married, and when they did, it was exclusively to people their own age, essentially. Yeah. It was something like 2% of 14-year-olds would get married, and it would always be to like a 15-year-old boy, you know, it would be to someone their age. Teenage girls marrying middle-aged men didn't happen. We have census data. It, it's just, that's that. <laughs> 
And also, this idea of they're going to go about presentism about how... And it wasn't okay how, then. People did have issues with it back then, as well. That's what I was going to say. Like, they're saying, oh, you guys are judging Joseph Smith by today's moral but standards. But I thought you said it didn't happen. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like totally. trend, you're like... It's like, and if that's not true, we have another fallback that could maybe yeah, defend so us. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's fucked up, isn't it? It's like, you're yeah. saying it didn't happen, and then you're saying... But if it did... How dare you question if it did happen? Okay, because God works in mysterious ways. But the thing is, is if you judge Joseph Smith by his own time his own standards... His scriptures, even. Yeah. <laughs> not even just his general rules for life, his fucking scriptures. Yeah, this isn't presentism. We're judging him by his own words. And not to mention that he also testified in front of the church. I can pull up the actual quote. Joseph Smith, 1844, a year, I think a year before he was killed and had up to, you know, between like 33 and 43 wives. What a thing it is for a man to be accused of committing adultery and having seven wives when I can only find one. I am the same man as innocent as I was 14 years ago and I can prove them all perjurers. That's a church approved source. That's from Joseph Smith, the history of the church. It's right there, people. Come on. We, we can lead you up to the gate, but we can't take you through it. Okay, you got to summon some courage within yourselves, and we know it's hard. Presentism is viewing past cultures through the lens of your specific modern culture and subculture. An example of that is to say, Abraham Lincoln was not for same-sex marriage. He was a homophobe. Well, in his culture, that concept wasn't even something people... I mean, yeah, but he was still a homophobe. <laughs> yeah, <but> your <laughs> leader is still a homophobe to this day in 2020. Like, like it, it's, that's still the, <laughs> do you, the definition of homophobia is, like, being afraid of homosexuality and mm. thinking it's bad. So he's still... <laughs> Literally blaming the, like, degeneration of society on homosexuality, which the church <laughs> does... Oh. Like you think, obviously you can say that, yeah, like men, I, I agree that like people are products of their time and I do think that it's easy for us to look back on history and be like, this person was a terrible person. Like people will be like, Marie Antoinette was terrible, she was so out of touch, but it was like, she from birth was raised in a family that raised her to be out of touch, she had no concept of really the world outside of her. <laughs> she was married to a fucking French prince when she's 13 and then she has to leave her family forever. Like, she was out of touch, but through no fault of her own. So, like, mm. I, 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 there's an argument to be made for presentism, for sure. Understanding that we're all the products of our environment and our genetics interacting with them. And if you're raised in a certain, you know, if you're raised in an environment where you've only ever heard that homosexuality is a terrible sin, you've never even had another idea come into your head about it, then, yeah, you probably will think that it's not really your fault. Like, mm. I believe in that. It doesn't work here. No, because we're Jason. judging him by his own time standard. Yeah. Joseph marrying 16 or 17 year olds isn't a big deal for the 19th century. It was a common age that women got married. Even Helen Mark Kimball willingly remarried when she was 16. Yeah, I mean, if you're locked into a marriage at 14, you're gonna get in another one when you get out of that one. You'll be like, I'm just gonna find a best one because that's all you know. You can't go back to being like a single gal. And again, it isn't her choosing to be married. Yeah. Part of what makes Joseph Smith's action so nefarious is that he follows like classic grooming tactics. Yeah. And one of them being getting close with um, significant members of the person's family, like, yeah. fucking abducted like in plain sight, where it's say, like... That's a Heber C. Kimball situation, where he was like, will you give me your daughter? <laughs> yeah, literally, that's yeah. what he did, is, like, approached him, was like, I mm -hmm. want to take your daughter, and he's like, here, have yeah. her, gift to the prophet, I'll be saved. But didn't Heber C. Kimball also want other wives, and then also have other wives after that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That worked out well for him. Just give your Boys daughter club. away. If Joseph was a pedophile for this, then so were a ton of men throughout Asia, Europe, whenever. Yes. Yeah, right. that's the there problem. That's the whole problem. That's, they've really got an issue with it. It's, it's weird how they've made the jump from like, the sex didn't happen, but it was also fine. It yeah, so fine. but yeah, it, it and didn't happen, and if it did, it's okay. It's like, they won't go there with the 14. They've switched to the narrative being about 16, 17 year olds mm -hmm. now for very good reason. Like, that's not an accident. The CES letter claims that Joseph married a mother-daughter set and three-daughter set. He uses this to insinuate that Joseph was having sex with them, but provides no evidence, which is interesting considering how Jeremy seemed obsessed with evidence until insinuation better serves his arguments. Lot to unpack about that statement. He's obsessed with evidence. <laughs> <laughs> Classic evil person. <laughs> Until there's a thing that's kind of harder to get evidence about because it was like people didn't really talk about sex back then. It's a really good question to ask somebody is what evidence would persuade you that you're wrong? Yeah. And ultimately, when you corner them, you find out that no evidence mm -hmm. is sufficient. There's no evidence that I've ever had sex. You can't prove it. It's just a stupid point. The only scriptural justification <laughs> for polygamy is the raising up of seed. 
the, all the women saw themselves as legit wives. Uh, like, it's just bullshit. They testified in court that they had sexual relationships with the prophet. And they're just going back and forth on this <laughs> argument of, like, it didn't happen, but if it did, it was fine because it was a different time, but it didn't happen. Think about it. If the ceilings were purely for Joseph to have sex, don't you think a mother would complain if he's sleeping with her and her daughter? Not if Not she didn't know thing. about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, one, yeah, but also no, like in cults that does happen. It happens. Joseph was also sealed to a 47-year-old, a 50-year-old, a 58-year-old, and a 78-year-old. Ooh, he also liked old women. It's <laughs> almost like women were property and more property, more power. So maybe he sexually preyed on young women and the elderly? Well, if the CES letter is making the case that Joseph was a pedophile, it makes sense to leave out the fact that he was sealed to a 78-year-old. Because it hurts the narrative. That's that doesn't hurt the narrative at all. I, again, like, sex for a lot of abusers is about power. Literally, like, does not matter. It's just like, okay, cool, like, dude really wanted to marry a lot of people. Yeah. And, and it, like, is a, it is an issue and a lot of power. Of the, yeah, because a lot of cult leaders do that. They do marry older women, because older women have influence and, you know, like, it... To have more people under your command is just useful. Mm -hmm. and especially, like resources as well, especially sexually. If you can, mm -hmm. that's watching that seduced documentary is so insightful. Mm -hmm. um, everyone should go watch it because I think it's on Hulu. Um, it shows how sex is used as a weapon to control people mm -hmm. and how it's a long grooming process. It's not as simple as just like, yeah. hey, want to get. Platonically married? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> 10 bucks says the 78 year old was loaded. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, because like, didn't Brigham Young do that? Like, marry some like rich widows? Yeah. Yeah. It's also important to know that as of today, DNA testing has not found any children between Joseph and any of these other women. Which means that, again, he broke his own rules for the reason of instituting polygamy in the first place, because the whole purpose was to have kids, and he couldn't even do that. Did they have birth control at Joseph's time? I can't remember. Yeah, they did. They did have birth control. And I know that there's like some speculation among ex-Mormons. That scholars. William Bennett, William. a doctor who yeah. specialized in abortion. Oh, who was friends with Joseph Smith. And in on uh, all yeah. the heyday sexuality going on in Nauvoo at the time. Yeah. 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 And, you know, who knows what jo you know, Joseph Smith could be a pull-out man, you know? Joseph and Emma, his first wife, had 11 children. So it's pretty clear that he could make kids. That's a less weird way of saying Joseph Smith was fertile. And as you probably guessed, there was no Plan B pill back in the 1840s. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Plan B, the only way to prevent pregnancy. No, they I'm still had like goat skin condoms and shit. Plan and B. Pill. Not to mention, again, if you're trying to keep uh, your illicit affairs a secret mm -hmm. yeah, you're not you're, gonna you're gonna be taking steps to not impregnate yeah, people yeah well exactly if the week before you if like if you tell the entire church that you only have one wife when you have 35 and that's known and now the church admits that and we have the date of when that quote was made and then now we know what the church says about it which is yes he did have that amount of wives then yeah you're gonna be putting some thought into not getting women pregnant, right? And also Keith. you have an abortion doctor friend, how convenient. Uh -huh. And also you can pull out, also you can use sheep, whatever. Keith Rainier, Keith Rainier he, uh, uh, for at least one woman, like only did uh, like oral sex on mm, her. Yeah. The letter attempts to make a case that Joseph was sealed to these women without Emma's consent. Well, unfortunately, Emma isn't a reliable witness. She both approves. Oh, the old demonizing Emma you. nugget. Here we go. Oh. She is just a bitchy woman who didn't want her husband marrying all these other men. <laughs> the Doctrine and Covenants is so shitty. Everything about Mormon history is shitty to Emma. Mm -hmm. But it's like, if you you have the choice here, but if you don't agree, you're going to be destroyed and cast down to hell. Straight and, to jail. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, she was supposed to give consent, but she didn't. So she's a total bitch and unreliable. <laughs> like, what? She was incredibly back and forth on the subject. He went back and forth yeah. on it. Like, meanwhile, he's telling people that it's not happening. Yeah, so it'll make her out it. to be this villain. They're like, she's not a reliable witness. It's like, doesn't sound like Joseph Smith's a reliable witness. When <laughs> yeah. you have in your own church's approved sources, like a quote of him saying, I've only got one wife, when he had 35 wives <laughs> or whatever. It's, it's dishonest to make an assumption on her behalf. Why isn't, uh, why isn't it dishonest to make a false assumption on Joseph Smith's behalf? 
The one who's actually doing the bad things. Like, what did she do that was wrong? Who did she coerce? Where is her ethical gray area besides just being like, my husband said he's not cheating on me, so he's not cheating on me. It goes to show how much, like, belief in the Mormon story and in especially Mormon apologetics requires you to be, like, so removed from, like, the actual reality of the human experience, which is, like, a woman is being told by her husband, who's now suddenly this leader of this church... You know, her husband, who was a known con man before this, is now telling her that she needs to be okay with him marrying all these teenage girls and other women. Like, there's, like, no empathy... Again, no empathy from these two. And, like, holy shit, that would be hard. Like, what what women do you know that would be okay with that? You know what I mean? Like... And, like, oh, it's always through the lens of, like, poor Joseph. Like, he didn't want to do it, and he had to do it anyway. And then, like, with Emma, it's just like, what a bitch. She should have gotten bored with it more. Yeah. And it's like... Think about what that would be like. Even if you think, even if you think that this is true, surely your c- proclaimed faith in Christ should make you want to extend empathy to people like Emma and be like, "Wow, how hard it would be to have to go through that. How hard it would be to watch your husband marry these teenage girls." The letter ends up confusing two stories in church history. Runnell says that Joseph told the girls an angel with a drawn sword would kill him if they didn't marry him. He never said that. People close to Joseph reported him saying that an angel would smite him if he didn't practice plural marriage. Nobody ever claimed that he said that to women. If they did, we would have quotes of women saying such. We don't. But Helen (laughs) Mark Kimball said he told me that the salvation of my family depended on it. And that's Mm. just as coercive as saying an angel with a flaming sword came. The salvation (laughs) of your family depends on it, but you know, you're free to make your own choice. I'm not gonna All all his friends said he did it said that, but we we doubt he would say that to a woman. But he wouldn't say it to the women, because if he said it to the women, that would make it coercive. Yeah. Come on. (laughs) Come on! The 1887 account by Ruth Sayers is clear that certain men were okay with Joseph being sealed to their wives in the next life. Yeah, because then they got to have a bunch of other women that mm. they could sleep with. And again, like, when that's what's coming down from the top, when that's what when uh-huh. God wants you to do, uh-huh. it's like, well, okay, if God wants me to do this, I guess I will take my wife. Yeah. The CES letter is wrong and misleading. The CES letter can't even stick to a narrative. It says <laughs> oh, these married women continued rich. to live as husband and wife with their first husband after marrying Joseph. This would insinuate that these marriages were not based around sex. Because you can't have sex with somebody <laughs> you, you don't, don't live, live with. with. It just it does, it can't happen. There's nowhere else it could happen, like say in a barn. <laughs> oh, this is, probably probably never even had sex ed. Thinks it goes through the belly button. Has no idea how any of this works. <laughs> especially if they were living and sleeping with their first husbands. The CES letter is wrong and misleading. Uh, they keep repeating it. They're using, like, I think that's a bit purposeful. They they, they keep release, repeating the phrase, it's misleading, just to try and... Mm-hmm. It's wrong. Know. It's misleading. It's, it's wrong. wrong. It's, it's misleading. misleading. It's failed. We should start doing that. Fair Mormon is wrong. It's, it's wrong. Misleading. It's misleading. It's misleading. It's wrong. <laughs> Fair Mormon is wrong and misleading. The one states he was married to a newlywed woman, Zina Huntington, and that she was pregnant. However, in 1898, Zina made clear that her marriage to Joseph was a ceiling for the next life. And that she ended the marriage with her first husband, Henry, anyway. I know, I was gonna leave Unrelated. Anyway. <laughs> Here's the thing. We're still learning new things about Joseph Smith's polygamy every year. And you're gonna learn so much more. I hope you see our video and learn a couple things. We can't wait, Jason! <laughs> if we answered every question about Mormon polygamy, we'd have to start a brand new channel. Also keep in mind that the reason we don't have a lot of this stuff is because the Mormon church like deliberately yeah. had like yeah. a many decades long total campaign to uh, keep the history hidden. Let- and the people who published it were excommunicated. Lest we forget, Joseph Smith destroyed a printing press <laughs> because he exposed his polygamy because at the time he was saying, I'm not doing polygamy. And then now the church is like, yes, he, he did he did burn in the printing press and he also was doing polygamy. <laughs> Something a total in- innocent person does. Yeah, but nothing says innocent, like just burning down the newspaper that writes about you. The point is, it's complicated, but the narrative presented to you by the CES letter is nonsense. It's also wrong and misleading. Fair Mormon is wrong. It's It's wrong. It's misleading. It's misleading. It's wrong. (laughs) If there is a God and the restored gospel of Jesus Christ is true, then that means at certain times God ordains or allows polygamy. That doesn't mean that. I mean, actually, I guess it does mean that because it can be. If if it if the. Mormon church is true, then fucking anything is Anything possible. goes. God can ordain like, anything, yeah. A dog may walk in through this window just like Chris Angel style <laughs> any minute if the Mormon church is true. <laughs> Polygamy is weird. It makes us uncomfortable because we're not used to it. However, just because something is different doesn't mean it's evil or even immoral. 
Ew, just, how just, dare you use Mr. Roger? Keep his name off your lips. Yeah, that's fucked up. The Book of Mormon is true, the church has the authority, Joseph Smith was a prophet, and I'm a virgin! Oh, don't worry, it's oh, not lost on us. Bless him, bless him! I, uh, like it, yeah, it's, virginity is a, a social currency in Mormonism, uh, lest we forget. That was sad. I thought they did a decent job on the production for a Mormon show, <laughs> like based on what they're capable. You oh know. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, what great other set? <laughs> I don't know what other arguments they could have made because it's like every argument they they've made. Like we've gone down that rabbit hole. And we've thought we've entertained that idea because you have to. These are. You, there's only a finite. If when you're confronted with the, the fact that Joseph Smith married a 14 year old girl, you can either deny that it happened, like, or deny Which that it happened in the way that they you present think. all of them at the same yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Like the soft, like telling. he probably didn't. If yeah. he did, yeah, so it probably deny, wasn't bad. Or you and minimize. if it was, then it's bad for everybody. Everybody's doing bad things. So really, nothing bad, nothing to see here, folks. Pay your 10. percent Deny or minimize, or both at the same time, if you can. Uh, Yep, well, I uh, hope that some of you found that valuable. Um, I hope that, I don't know, I guess I'm hoping that people who need to see this will see it and people who just want to sort of just feel held <laughs> for like a little bit of time by our videos. I hope we could give that to Consider you. Consider this your A lot of people have told us that our videos like keep them sane while they're at BYU or something like that. So I'm mm. just like, I love you guys. Yeah. That's really cool. I'm glad to provide that service. <laughs> Through, yeah. through whatever this is. And thank you. Thank you to our Patreon subscribers, of course, for making this possible. Also, we have shirts now. We have shirts now. Buy a shirt. We don't have ours yet. They're in the mail. But um, yeah, we'll leave the link in the description box. Yeah. They're cool. Ah. And they come in many fun colors. Well, thanks for ah. watching. Yeah, give this video a thumbs up. Let us know if you think we should do other videos by them, you know, in this thermal one thing and also what ones you think we should do. We got a big Book of Mormon video coming out. Oh yeah, big Book of Mormon video coming out. Our big Book of Mormon <laughs> video. It's our Christmas bonanza. <laughs> we should do a Christmas bonanza. What's a bonanza? To me that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, bonanza, bonanza you got like tens. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know a brass band. Budget right now. <laughs> well thank you for watching and uh, that's the end. Bye. Bye.